Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, today I'd like to talk to you about a subject that's popped up recently in uh, several conversations and uh, uh, want to clear away any ambiguity on the role that uh, intentionality and uh, agency and, and choice has in what I'm teaching, because it's something that is, uh, I consider it to be really crucial for, uh, for developing your Kung Fu. And um, the, you know, the question comes with like, how much are you doing and how much is being done through you? Because a, a lot of times people say, yeah, well, it feels like I didn't do anything. It feels like, you know, my arms just floated up in the air or things like that. And that's a, that's a great feeling. And it can give you a, a sense that, oh, maybe it's not me that's happening, that, you know, something is, is doing it through me. And I really want to emphasize that there is a, it's important that you are doing it, that it's at some level, and even if it's an expanded you, a, a you that uh, includes parts of you that maybe you have not yet taken responsibility for, not yet identified with. And so there is, as we develop our Kung Fu, we actually get bigger. We start to shift our awareness from identity of just say my this this sack of water that uh, I propel through through life and uh, and go to something more and include maybe the uh, the insubstantial aspects of 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 me which could be say the um, my energy field could be part of that which I identify with and going beyond that to uh, to something even bigger, you know, what we would call spirit. That is the the part of uh, the that which unifies the wholeness of of me. And uh, so, getting the the uh, the sense that that yes, you're involved in this process is a really important part of the. Uh, of the journey as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, th there will be some who say, yeah, well, how much do I really control my body? How much do I really control my nervous system? How much, you know, am I making this happen? And how much is it just happening? And uh, so there are a, a variety of ways of thinking about this, which are uh, all, perfectly valid because there are different perspectives on what the what the game we're playing is and so i'm not really looking for what is ultimate truth here what i'm looking for is what is effective what gets the job done and my you know the, the short answer to all this is pretend pretend like you are causing this thing to happen. And the, you know, you know, say my, uh, someone could say, but Rick, I, I really am not a dragon and I don't have a dragon tail. So why, you know, you're telling me to do something which I know to be impossible. And I say, oh, that's, that, that's true. But if you pretend that you have a tail and that you're a big ass dragon, then, mm -hmm cool stuff might happen with your energy field if you do that. If you create this, this idea, this you imagine that you're this dragon and you have this pretty good big tail, then it will do things that you will, um, you won't be able to do if you're locked into a certain way of looking at your situation. And so whenever I, I say about like, oh, if you point your finger, you know, someone say, well, yeah, I just point my finger and it works. I say, great. 
And then if I grab their wrist and I say, okay, now point and, and reach forward with it. And they say, oh, I can't. Because Why? Because the, the mind is distracted by the resistance that it's encountering and it forgets to point. So one has to then bypass the, the distraction because this is kind of like a trans induction. If I, if I grab someone's wrist and they say, ah, so their attention is taken away from the thing that they want to do, which is to point and reach and goes on to the, to the resistance onto this, this, this interruption in their consciousness. So they then have to overcome that. They have to intentionally, willfully say, no, I'm going to point and reach with my finger. And that requires more and more intention, more and more choice, the more you encounter resistance, the more resistance you encounter. So you have to, and this comes up throughout everything. You know, whenever you go through a, a Taiji tram form, say, you know, the, the mind will want to go on a holiday and go elsewhere. And it requires a, a focused intention to say, no, no, I'm doing my Taiji Tran now. I have to control my mind. So there is this aspect, which I consider to be the Shen or spirit, that has this kind of executive function which says, no, no, I'm going to control my brain to direct it in this way to make this happen. Is that ultimately true? Is that, I don't know. I don't know if it, that is the highest truth or not. I just know that it works. It works if you pretend that you are, you are actually doing it. You are doing this thing. It's not just something that's happening. You are participating in the event. And this kind of gets into the idea of habits too, because a habit is something, it's a fixed behavior that is, you know, is a, a fixed way of thinking, a fixed way of feeling, a fixed way of doing that is pre-conscious. That is, it has, but by repetition, it has been moved into the pre-conscious so that you're not having to think about it. It's just like, oh, that's just what happens. Like, oh, this is what I do. Oh, you know, and it's something that you're not saying, I think I will slap my forehead now. It's like, no, it's just, it's just my habit of that's what I do. And uh, a lot of martial arts are designed around the idea of developing habits. You train a specific action over and over and over again in a specific way so that it's there and you deliver that punch the same way regardless of circumstances it is you know it's something that you have there i've known many martial artists who say yeah i train this way so that when the moment comes whenever you know push comes to shove i don't have to think i just boom i'm there and i, I can execute this maneuver and for me, that's not at all what we're doing. In fact, we're doing the opposite. In fact, I would like to break as many habits as, as possible and encourage you to do the same. I want you to go back and actually pretend that you are causing this thing to happen. That you are, whenever I lift my arm, I want to, I don't want to imagine that someone else is lifting it for me, I want to know that, yes, I am activating this thing. And by doing that, I get to a finer and finer control over my body mind so that I'm able to go to the gap between the places, between the thoughts, the gap between the the intention and the action and once you get really familiar with that you can do it very very fast and it's not like oh i will think about what i'm going to do now and do it it's no it's like oh no i know what's happening so this takes us into rather than developing habits we are developing 
our ability to move into a super conscious state where we can access the entirety of our Kung Fu, that is all the cool stuff we've learned along the way and be able to access it instantaneously by knowing more than thinking. So we move beyond the cumbersome idea of conscious thought and move into this ability to know. But how do we get there? We have to first think about it. We have to first consciously, intentionally, willfully do this thing so that we can recognize how these, these actions are done and then we can we can then know that and then when we're in a super conscious state we just we're just able to do we don't have to we don't have to to think about it and this is very different than the idea of of habit which is a pre-conscious act action that is your you're not yet conscious and so that's sort of a way of thinking about it. If you just have like two poles, you have like conscious and unconscious, you know, oh, habit is unconscious behavior and consciousness is different. If we have this third pole, this third state of a super conscious, which includes both the conscious and the pre-conscious, then we're able to access stuff that is ordinarily hidden from, from the conscious mind, the the rational thinking mind, and we're able to just immediately go there. And uh, so that's the direction I would like the training to go is to develop that ability to really fine tune our sensory and motor functions to such a degree that we can really slide in there and and both sense and do at a much higher level and do it so fast that it appears that you're just doing it automatically. So in this, this idea, going back to how much, how much am I doing whenever I say, control your breath? I know that it's gonna happen whether or not I am thinking about it or not. I'm probably gonna continue breathing until I'm not anymore, in which case then I'll have other problems. But uh, if I can, can say, oh, I'm going to count my breaths or I'm going to inhale for a count of three or five or seven or 10 or whatever and exhale for a count and, and that way I am regulating my body mind. And in so doing, I'm learning to control that. I am pretending I have control of my body until I do. And which point then I will have a better ability to control my breath. Same thing with any movement that we're, we're doing here. If you can slow it way down so that you can see all the little steps and also recognize where pre-conscious uh, habits of movement, say, uh, pop up and you, oh, I, I couldn't see that because I was going too fast. And then you go back and you, you take control over that thing, which before had been controlling you. So uh, uh, before we go, Further, are there any questions, comments, agreements, disagreements, whatever? Uh, anybody? All good? All good? Okay. Very well then. So we're gonna move on then. And we're going to fly some more. Uh, last week, we began the getting introduced to the eagle energy. And uh, I kind of think of it as a complement to the grass dragon that we had been doing 
a few weeks ago, which is low and earthy and watery and it's you know very um kind of there's a, a lot of yin in that yang because it's so powerfully yin and uh with the eagle we are powerfully young it becomes very light and lively we're rather than this low sinewy powerful dragon energy we are going and embracing the spirit of the eagle so it's not just you know i'm going to flap my wings or whatever it's it's not about just what you're doing it's about actually embodying the spirit of that animal and the uh, you know one of the things in in you know the classics they talk about you know your your attitude in taiji chuan is that you know you're like an eagle spotting a hare you know you're 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 looking there and and there's this you know calmness yet this focus directed intention and you know you 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 got it um so we're getting that and also what we're doing is we're opening the chest opening the shoulders we're creating this connection this whole body connection that extends and expands it's 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 a very expansive um set of postures which has its own its own charms and uh, the steps are mm, light and lively they they go down and then up and then down and then up so we're we're getting a lot of this different kind of pulsing going on there and um, it can be uh vigorous um and i may even demonstrate some of the postures in a way which some of you may find challenging and just realize that you don't have to go as low say as i do whenever whenever i'm doing it if if that's inappropriate for your physical state right now or even your energetic state you don't necessarily have to do that i do i'm going to demonstrate it you know a way i would do it just so that you uh, you see you know what what's possible there but i want you to take responsibility for your own body mind and you go and you you do what feels right with you and we'll take it from there so um um i'm gonna do it facing you uh just because there's so much that's happening with um with my face i know some of some people have asked me to to turn my back and and do it so that they can follow along so the the whole left right thing is uh is um uh, uh you know becomes it, it's a problem for some people and uh i would ask you since we're going really slow listen to my words and also learning that left right thing being able to to identify left and right in your movements is really important for your kung fu and um, i'll just take a moment here just to explain why the um, the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body largely it's it's not it's not one to one but that's you know the the general tendency and they don't the two hemispheres of of your your brain don't talk to each other very well so they uh they communicate via something called the uh, a trunk of nerves called the corpus callosum and but there's kind of a traffic jam there and whenever you're doing that so there's a tendency they're not talking to each other but what we are doing by identifying this right and left and 
being able to to shift back and forth, we are creating something called hemispheric synchronization. That is, you're getting the left and right brain to start to communicate to each other, to synchronize. They don't unify. We're not talking about a fusion here. We're talking about a synchronization because they're still controlling the, the parts of the body which are assigned to them, but they are communicating very fast and across the surface rather than through the through the, the center brain, through the corpus callosum. So it's, a, it's an instantaneous kind of talk. And so whenever you are getting your hemispheric synchronization, you're learning to, you're training your brain to think at a different level, to respond at a different level. The thinking is part of actually, to be, you know, to be clear, thinking is what I would call mind, which is, you know, uh, more of an insubstantial aspect of what's going on. The brain function itself, though, is related very much to mind and thinking, but it's not one to one. But I don't want to get too wonky here on that. So the uh, the producer says, "Oh, please do not get wonky." And uh, <laughs> no, he's going to go on a tangent. <laughs> and so, so we're going. But I just want to say that it's worth doing to learn to, you know, whatever, even if it's mirror image, you know, I say your right hand, you know, know which hand's right and, and do that. So you're not just doing it visually, it's, it's actually, you're converting my words into, into thoughts. So why don't you stand up and let's, uh, let's do some, uh, some eagle. Rick, Rick, can you make sure we see your feet? Uh, sure. <clears throat> last time, last week, we had a hard time seeing your feet. Okay. Uh, I will do the best I can. Since I will be moving closer to you as I go on, that may change, but you'll get the idea from the uh, from the start. So, so we'll we'll start. Well, uh, first of all, let's just get our central equilibrium and our three pillars in. So you want to get that really well established before we get started here. So let me get a little closer to you just for this part and then I'll then I'll back up so you can see the feet. The uh, so let's just get begin with your your um, your weight over the balls of your feet and set your knees, reach for the crown of your head, tuck in your chin and open the jade pillow gate. So we're immediately starting off getting our central equilibrium. We're finding that center pole there, that sweet spot, which feels like kind of a little precarious. And the irony is that the more precarious it feels, the more it um, is not, the more stable it is. But you're, you're shifting from identity, identifying with the body and more into, into the, the energy. We're opening the, the gates for the big chi through the balls of the feet, you know, the bubbling well points, and then through the crown of the head and the bai hui. We're opening that, the yang chi of the heavens, the yin chi of the earth. Relax your lower back, drop your sacrum, Push away from the earth and then spiral down and just release your quad very nice and easy. Very relax, sinking down into your legs. Reach out with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. Reach with the fingers. And with the eagle, your hands are going to be, they're going to look a little like the dragon. Only this more of a, let me give you a figure, a little bit more of a, a grasping, more of eagle talons going on there. Even though there's no tension in the hands, there's still more, you know, there, there, there's a, a grasping quality there. So we're still going with those fingernails 
and getting that 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 feeling of that. So want to get that, you know, you know, feel that as you're as you're standing there. So there we're getting that that sense of uh, you know that connection to the fingernails. And let's uh, just bring it bring that go into the balls of your feet now and reach with your wrists. And then reach with the fingers and grasp with those talons. Open your shoulder blades. Feel that expansion across your back, opening, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists, reaching with those talons. Pretend you have talons. And then reach down, go to your heels and Reach down with your elbows and very lightly float down. And just pause and feel into the quietude. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple steps back. Let me know if you can't see what, what I'm doing, but so reestablish your three pillars in this posture. And feel those talons, go to the balls of your feet and reach up with your wrists. Reach and open, open between your shoulder blades. Really feel that expansion and reach down with your elbows, sink into your heels, and hands come down. Just pause a moment and feel that. We're just getting things started energetically. We're priming the pump. Now step out with your left foot, about a hip width. And go to the balls of your feet, set your knees and feel those talons, reach up with your wrists. And reach open, open your back. Reach out and then ah, sink into your heels and down. A turn. So you're turning to the left. And Feel the left heel, your front foot, left ball, and bring your hands up. And reach, open. Now feel your right heel, your back heel, and pull in. With your, with your time, you're grasping with those talons, you're pulling in. At the same time, your body goes forward to meet. And that's, think of your heel and reach out. Think of your right heel, reach out. And Pull back, go into your left heel and your left ball now and pull back. And then go to your right heel and reach forward. Now rotate your hands like you're 
turning a couple of knobs. Really very consciously, deliberately feeling each little bit, each moment of the turn. Feel the changes that are occurring in your arms, in your hands, in your back, your shoulders by doing that. Now separate. Feel your weight in your, your right heel, your back heel, and relax your arms so that your elbows are dropped, you're reaching out with your wrists, you're not, shoulders aren't tense like that, you're just very lightly, and right now you're just going to feel, reach with the wrists, reach down with the elbows, and as your wrists come up, your fingers drop. Your elbows get down, your fingers come up. So you're just feeling into the very lightness of those arms. The yang chi is expanding your arms. Feel that reaching through there, that, that energy moving through as you do that. And then just pause a moment and just feel into that. As if you are you know, an eagle that is just, just coasting on a thermal, say. You're just coasting. Good. So now we're going to work a little bit. We're going to have our eagles work a little bit. And we sink into that left heel. As we do that, we're coming up and ah, feel elbows reach down, fingers come up, and then sink into the left heel. Arms come up. You're reaching up with the wrists. The fingers are are down, and then up. Sink. Sink and this and up. And bring your right foot up on the toe, on your big toe. Up. Feel yourself being like you're floating up into the air. You're really light and lively. And then Oh, we're going to go down. We're going to, oh, okay. Sinking, 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 sinking. As we're sinking, the arms go up. And then, ah. Uh, going down. And up. Body goes down. Arms go up. And just feel into that. Reach out with those wrists. Feel those, those claws, those talons. And uh, coming up. And step with your right foot. Just stepping. And coming up as you're in the Loading up that right leg and then ah down. Body goes down, arms go up. Body goes up, arms come down. Body goes down, arms come up. Feel that reaching, sink, sink into that right quad. You really have a stable foundation with your foot and your knee and all the action, all the folding is happening at the claw and then up and then step in with your left foot 
and up. Arms come up, body goes down. Body comes up, arms go down. Body down, arms up. And, uh, down. And step your left foot. And here, the left arm comes up as you sink, right arm is lower. So we're, and the, your gaze is down there. You're banking, you're looking down your spine, whatever it is that you're looking at there. And up, so your body come down, arms come down, body goes up. And sink. Really open, open the shoulders, open your back. And down, arms come down. Good, step back here so you can see my feet. And going to step forward with my right foot. And Right arm goes is higher than the left. And body comes up, hands come down. Think, arms come up. And then hold that. Just feel into that. Feel your feel your talons. Feel yourself so prepared for whatever you need to do. You're, you have that single-minded focus. And then, ah, oh, arms come down. And then your arms come to your right, come over and Hold your, you're grasping with those talons, reaching out. And you feel into that. And then sink into your left leg and your arms will come up and you're going to step with your left foot and you're going to sink and reach out to your right. So your left foot is forward. You're reaching out with your arms to the right. Opening. And and you're going to, arms going to come up, step out with your right foot, and pulling down so that you're reaching down, down here at your, at the Dantian level, and you're, you're gazing down, your intention, you're, you're looking down through your hands very intently. And then you reach to your left, step out with your left foot and reaching down, opening. And then step in with your right foot, step out and reach out with your hands straight ahead, grasping with those fingernails, those talons, and 
turn. Very deliberately, very consciously. And then step out with your left foot and turn. Step in. Feet are parallel, hip width. Arms in front of you. Reach, open your, open your back, feel the space between your scapula, reaching out with your elbows, your wrists. Grasping with those talons. Sink into your heels. Empty that out. And pause. Step in, take a deep breath. Gathering, young, fall to your feet, feel that, and now heels and yin, dissolving, throwing it away, emptying out. Feel into the emptiness, the stillness. Please have a seat. <laughs> I was that Scott. <laughs> that was swell. I, I um had a hard time. I you know have a hard time trying to hold on to the eagle energy while trying to remember the steps and you know paying attention to the steps in my right, and my left, and everything else. But the more I re when I realized that if I just really feel my wings, like from under my arm all the way to connect it to my side, it just really, it just gives you the whole feeling of the ego. Yeah, uh, you're right. It, the first time you do it, it's like, you know, what's going on here? You know, but you uh, do exactly as what, as, as you said there, you feel it and it will, it will educate you. 
you know, you'll, you you don't have to think about it. You just, you just do it, you know, and it, it, it comes in and then you can think about it later and say, okay, which, what was the order? What was the sequence there? And then you can play the, uh, the video again and, 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 you know, do it again. Cool. Anybody else? Lynn. Well, I am definitely a fledgling. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was a little, um, I'm curious about at some points it seemed that you, I mean, you said come up, you know, on the ball and at other points you seemed to have that back heel down, but I wasn't quite sure is the back heel. Um, what's the back heel doing? Is there, is there consistency or does it change? I would say it is something that as you get a hold of all the moving parts, you can play around more with with that. You okay. know, I would say it's it's not as uh, uh, you know not as vital. What we're doing with the heel and the and, and the ball there is is we're regulating yin and yang, and. Right. Uh, as Scott says, you got enough to do there that uh, that I will say it every now and then, anytime I think to say it. But yeah, as much as you're doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing a lot too. So, yeah, no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm not going to remember to 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 talk about every aspect on every every movement. We couldn't, we couldn't take it if you did. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be too much, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's good. That's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Cool. Valerie. I find it very interesting the similarity between the eagle talons and the dragon claws. Um, there for a while, I was kind of <clears throat> beating myself up when I was being, you know, doing the dragon because my my hands, not my arms, but my hands felt like, oh, my hands are stiff, my hands are stiff. And it was like, but no, no, they're not stiff. They're just so freaking full. They feel, you know, that's what my mind goes to. My my brain says, oh, they're stiff, but they're just, I think of a brick that's empty, if that makes any sense at all. And doing the eagle, I have that same feeling of, no, my hands are not tense. They're just so freaking full. It, 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 it's, it's just, I find it very fascinating, you know, to, to feel that. And right. it was, it was funny because when you said, first thing, when you said eagle tonight, I had wings sprout out <laughs> from my shoulder blades. <laughs> I felt like some kind of weird painting or something. Um, so I was ready. <laughs> and there, there was, there was a moment, there was a, there was a, whoa, you know, the energy was just really, really nice. Really nice. Good, 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 good. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 oh, go ahead, Scott. I was just going to say, at that one point, I don't know, the first or second time you had us looking down sort of through our wings, and I almost got vertigo. It was, there was so much, you know, I so much felt like I was <laughs> flying, looking down at the ground or whatever it was yeah beautiful. beautiful good and that's that's what we're looking for like really get you buy into the into the fantasy here because that's what opens up the chi that's you know we it it, it says what else is possible and we say well of course i don't have wings and i'm not flying but i'm gonna pretend and you know and like i'm gonna pretend i've got talons and all this stuff and it awakens these energies that are, you know, they're just not available when we look at life through our fixed ideas about what, what is possible.
Anybody else? Okay, Jonathan. It does seem like these talons and the whole nails and tiger claws, all of it, is almost like a key in the ignition substitute for pointing, as close as any other move we've ever done. There's something about the whole hand at the nail level that seems to really turn things on just doing that, which you can do watching a movie or anything, just like you can point anywhere at any time. Right. So I just keep on acknowledging how powerful just that simple, undetectable thing. You can, another way to do Tai Chi all day and no one knows you're doing it. <laughs> Amen. And you know, what Valerie was saying about the hands, like, yeah. You know, yeah, you know, something that you had asked me, you know, years and years ago, like how much attention do you put on your hands during the course of the day? It's like, it's like, you know, <laughs> when am I not, right. you know? Yeah. And so you know, this is a way of yeah. amplifying the chi in your hands so that you get that fullness that, that, that Valerie talking about. It's like, it's like, oh, then they've never felt like this before. And you get, you know, it's this uh, this really uh, wild expansion of the the flow, which is not just energy, but it's also, you know, you're opening up the capillaries in your in your hands. You're you're increasing your circulation there, and I I think it, it's probably doing a, a lot of good things for particularly those of us who of a certain age who tend to court. Uh, arthritis and things like that. As we get older, there's a stiffness that comes in and the more energy and the more blood circulating in your hands, the, the more regenerative possibilities are there for you, where you can actually dial back that, uh, you know, the uh, calcification of your, of your digits and and to actually get some uh, re a return to some of that former flexibility. At least that's my theory on it. So yeah, Sharon, <laughs> I'm having an experience. Okay, <laughs> as her <laughs> Jonathan pointed out, the hands, and so. So I was holding my hands in this position, you know, on my lap. And when I was doing that, I not only felt the pulsation between my hands, but my jaw, my, my, my jaw, you know, and, and then when I held my hands like this, I felt everything going up, up and down. Wow. That's cool. Way cool. <laughs> 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 uh, and wife, we can do this anytime any place you're sitting mm -hmm. watching tv and you can kind of steal in you know a minute of dragon claws or eagle claws and and who's who's to know <laughs> yeah my, my tolerance for dull com my tolerance for dull conversations has gone way up you know people are talking <laughs> at me <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh yeah sure yeah oh yeah mm. <laughs> lower so they don't you know right <laughs> it's real dull maybe and then i'll go to a ward off but other than that, <laughs> that's good that's good speaking Great. of which if i may adventures adventures with rick today um going from a ward off to kind of holding the ball that that movement there man watch for the that claw release there because i think there's something in that ward off that has so much power that you pull to it that it's guiding you instead of the song i'm just saying it's at that moment early in the form that i'm hoping next tuesday we can look at because going into song rather than putting your butt out is kind of everything well almost everything it's a lot of the thing and uh i just had a real illumination with him today five minutes with rick Best time you can <laughs> rather than any teacher I've ever heard of is five minutes with Rick. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate that's my that. pitch. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, the and that kind of gets into the idea of habits. It's like when you slow it way down, and like you know, you're you've been you've done ward off 
10,000 times already. And you've got a habit that your body mind goes into. It's a pre-conscious fixed pattern of movement. And whenever you put the brakes on, shine a light on it, it's like, oh, why am I doing it that way? And it really helps. And I think there's something that John is referring to is whenever you provide some resistance to the motion, because that's when, you know, a lot of your assumptions are challenged. It's like, oh, can I express gin with, with even just a light touch, you know, as a resistance? What happens to my... What happens to my my kung fu whenever I encounter any kind of of impediment in my in my movements? Where do I go? And uh, you can do the, the a form ten thousand times and still not have that. Uh, it it kind of requires just being able to to experience the opposition so that you can then go deeper into your own practice. Scott. It's so bizarre that you say that because I've been doing my form and literally been thinking for the last, I don't know, four or five days that I'm just doing this ward off the same way I always do it. I mean, the exact, that's just bizarre. It's the exact same move that you just, mentioned and I've really been thinking that I'm like yeah <laughs> so bizarre yeah and and then you know when that uh uh you know what does Steve Watson say you know, start slow and then taper off it uh I uh mm. I, I, I like <laughs> you know, that idea there's like oh yeah even even if you're used to doing your word off say really slow you know and then all right Slow it down by half. Slow it down by, you know, glacier speed, and just kind of get that and and see what pops up whenever you do that. Just like when we're doing the eagle, like doing those movements, those those you know, dropping down into your claw really slowly. It's like you know, it causes you to make certain things conscious, and you start to recognize, oh, I really need to work on this particular this particular simple thing of just going up and down you know in order to be able to do it in the most effective efficient uh graceful way possible yeah Jonathan. because what we do instead is put our butts out a little bit even the tiniest bit i mean rick was just focused on my coherence here and the moment, and you, ah, 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 you lost it. You have it now. You lost, and the moment he said I lost it, I could feel it. My butt, the slightest little feeling of my butt going out a little bit. And remember, it's named after me. It's, it is called JBS, <laughs> right? They kindly <laughs> changed to gutting butt syndrome, but that's not its origin. Uh, but anyway, I mean, Rick's right. I mean, you partners, you can, you can test each other, but you'll feel it. And the question is, why? Why am I so willing to not trust what is the fear of letting go into that song on this move that makes me put my butt out for support. It's kind of really interesting. Like I can spare myself some therapy if I go into this and really allow myself. And if I make one more point on it, Rick's claiming space exercise begins with that move. Mm -hmm. So if we do that and do a little word off, it could be a whole Tuesday too. Paper <laughs> off. And Slow down. Uh, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, okay. Anybody else? Scott, you had something? Yeah. Happy birthday, Maria. Happy birthday. Maria. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hello. Yeah. Uh, today? Your birthday today? No, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow. Because I was with her this morning. I would have felt really bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We love you, Maria. Okay. Happy birthday, Eve. 
Yeah. Great. The most beautiful sound I've ever heard. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.